welcome to writing with Hamstar. In 1967, Roger Zelazny released the book Lord of Light. A year later, it won the Hugo Award for Best Novel. Lord of Light cemented Roger Zelazny as one of the greatest science fiction writers of all time. Yet, how can a novel, loved by critics and commercially successful, suffer from severe plotting mistakes? In this video, we'll discuss four errors and show how to avoid them in your own stories. Let's break down Lord of Light. Beware, here be spoilers. First, the overall story. Lord of Light is set on another planet that humans have colonized and conquered. Here, humans use technology to establish themselves as gods, recreating the Hindu pantheon. But not all humans are gods. Only a chosen few from Earth, and their most beloved descendants, are allowed into the pantheon. How, then, does one become a god? Through the transfer of souls. These Hindu gods transfer their souls from one body to the next, achieving practical immortality. The gods are ever jealous of their technology, destroying all innovation, and keeping the mortals locked in a dark age, reminiscent of feudal times. Enter Sam, the story's main character. He rebels against the Hindu gods and their celestial city seeking to spread technology so that the planet's other humans don't have to live in oppression. Sam takes inspiration from the Buddha myth, styling himself as such, while he goes against the celestial city. At the story's beginning, Sam's rebellion has already failed. But there's hope. A talking monkey, the death god, and a goddess trapped in human flesh work together to revive Sam, the Buddha and the rebellion begins anew. Before we discuss the first plotting mistake, I rate Lord of Light at 4 out of 5 stars. If I give a book 5 stars, I'm actively planning on rereading it sometime in the future. Lord of Light is at 4 stars because the book is excellent enough to be highly recommended to others. This is because the author's style is impressive. He uses religious and archaic word choices, alongside highly scientific language, thus creating a sharp contrast between religion and technology throughout the story. He's gotten to the core of the Buddha myth, taking inspiration from it to create the challenges Sam has to face. The result is breathtaking. His story world mixes creatures from Eastern myths with the possibilities of science fiction. It's a story world so memorable that the Hugo Award is highly deserved, and writers can learn a lot from Zelazny. With that out of the way, here's the first plotting mistake. Story as backstory. As mentioned, Lord of Light begins in the present with Sam being revived to once again fight against the celestial city and the Hindu gods. The first chapter introduces us to Sam and his gang of three strange companions. The reader expects that the next chapter is going to continue their adventure, their heroic quest to defeat the evil gods. That's not what happens. Instead, we get hundreds of pages of backstory. Chapters after chapters are actually set in the past, creating a false frame, a false start, a false promise from author to reader. The reader always expects to return to the present, to this gang of four, and their shenanigans. And the reader is severely disappointed as this doesn't happen for a long time. At 150 pages into the story, tension is dead. We know that the past Sam will fail in his rebellion, but the reader is still stuck. It's easy for the reader to lose interest at this point, closing Lord of Light for good. What should Zelazny have done instead? He should have figured out a way to make the backstory come out through the adventure in the present. For modern writers, if you have to spend chapter after chapter after chapter info dumping, 
Publishers will turn down your story. There's a reason why flashbacks exist. There's a reason why backstory needs to be tied into the present, not dramatized to such an extent that tension dies and the narrative drive grinds to a halt. Mistake number two, crumbling central conflict. What is a central conflict? It's the fundamental opposition weaved into characters and their conflicting main goals. In The Lord of the Rings, this is the opposition against Sauron. And as in any good story, the reader should immediately know when the central conflict is resolved. When the Ring of Power falls into Mount Doom, Sauron is defeated, and we know the conflict is over with the rest of the chapters being the final image. In Lord of Light, the main opposition is between Sam and the Celestial City, between Buddha and the Hindu gods. The central conflict should always be resolved in the story's climax. Does Zelazny follow this wisdom? No. And that's why his plotting crumbles. So what does the author do instead? He resolves the central conflict not in the story's climax, but in a single page of telling. He doesn't even follow the conventional wisdom of show don't tell, where you dramatize the characters becoming friends. All the reader get is some dialogue between Sam and the Death God, and voila, Sam and the Celestial City are now pals. 250 pages of conflict crumble in a single page, as we are suddenly told that they've become friends and plan to work together. Obviously, this is ridiculous and bad plotting. There are still chapters to go, and instead of having the climax be about Sam versus the Hindu gods, we get another branching story. This segues nicely into the third big plotting mistake of Lord of Light. New Enemy Syndrome Since the central conflict is done and dusted, Zelazny has to introduce a new villain to round out the book. All along, Buddhism and Hinduism have been in opposition, but now he throws in another character based on Christianity, namely the character Nariti. The introduction of a third belief system here is jarring, coming out of the blue and with the typical bad guy tropes. Nariti is this new enemy syndrome. We're given some brief scenes and almost no setup before the final battle commences. Now, Sam has to save the world from a new baddie, a new dark lord. Even worse, the battle against Nariti is resolved in a single sentence. The reader is told Nariti's attack has failed. And this segues into a kind of personal duel to end it all, with the love interest Kali fighting against the big baddie. We know Nariti has failed, so this duel is pointless. What Zelazny should have done is to have a Hindu god from the Celestial City be the final boss, instead of relying on the new enemy syndrome. Thus, the central conflict would still have been unresolved and only the battle between Sam and this Hindu god would determine if mankind would have access to technology, or if they would stay in a dark age. Fourth and final mistake, undeserved emotions. At the end, Kali, the female love interest, has flipped from opponent to Sam's friend. To make a tragic ending, Zelazny has Kali die. In the final battle against Nariti, Kali's lover, the Death God, wails and holds her, a gloomy moment amid the final victory of good over evil. A bittersweet ending. The problem with all of this is that the reader's emotional investment isn't there. Kali is unsympathetic. There's even a conflict over if she's Sam's love interest or the Death God's love interest. Who are we to feel sad for? That question is never answered. Simply put, the story is not a romance. The story lacks enough scenes to prove that this love between Kali and the Death God was good, and that they were right for each other. Even worse, 
The reader is expected to feel sad as suddenly the Death's God's daughter is introduced on the last few pages. It's a decent backstory, explaining why the Death God acted as he did, but it's thrown in our faces. The reader has no time to lament over the tragedy of this disabled girl and her father as the story promptly ends. When writing your own stories, Consider the emotions you want the reader to feel and how this relates to the genre. This story is myth and science fiction. It's not fit for the sadness of a tragic romance. To sum up the mistakes, Lord of Light has too much backstory. The beginning chapter promises something else than what is delivered. Lord of Light's central conflict crumbles and is replaced by a shoe-din conflict relying on the new enemy syndrome. The ending does not match the genre causing undeserved emotions. That's all folks. Writing Cat wishes you good luck with your own plotting. Remember to subscribe if you enjoyed this and want to see more writing advice and world building content. Follow me on Twitter to stay up to date. Until next time.